This episode is brought to you by Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th, only on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. Rated TV MALV. Viewer discretion advised. Maya Lopez has betrayed her mentor, the notorious Kingpin. Now on the run, she returns to her hometown to prepare for the biggest fight of her life. Don't miss Marvel Studios' hardest-hitting series yet. An epic five-episode event. Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th, only on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. Listen to the 48 Hours podcast for shocking murder cases and compelling real-life dramas from one of television's most watched true crime shows. Go behind the scenes of each episode with award-winning CBS News correspondents and producers in Postmortem, a weekly deep dive. Listen to 48 Hours wherever you get your podcasts. Hey y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show the end. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Y'all, this is April. And this is Caroline. And what show are they listening to? Oh, this is Bloody Happy Hour. Your favorite. True crime podcast. It is. It is. Go ahead and press follow, subscribe, like, rate, and review it right now. And send to your Sancho because... Excuse me? Send to your side piece. Oh, side piece. Send I Send to your Sancho. Yes, 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 yes. Send to your um, Botox lady. Oh, for sure. Share the episodes right now. Um, and if you mm, want to go rate and review, bef- even before you listen, you can do that. Mm-hmm. If you already hate us, go ahead and tell us. Yeah, go ahead and tell us. If you already love us, go ahead and tell us. Today we do a full episode. On Tuesdays we do our little quickies, like in the news episodes. So if you missed Tuesday, go back and listen to the Tuesday episode. It's just a quick like update of what's happening now, the, the now happenings. Yeah, in the news. Um, But you know what else is happening now? What? Um, It's December, and what better... To have in December than clean shaved balls. <laughs> it's never too early April to play holiday music. Did you know that? Yeah, I guess so. Or to start thinking about gifts. Yeah. yeah. Whether for friends or family. Not family. <laughs> that would be incest. <laughs> Whether for friends, you might have some friends in your pants. And you can make this season even more jolly with Manscaped. Did Manscaped! You know? Do your little drummer boy a favor and use that lawnmower 4.0 to avoid those silent nights in the bedroom. Uh Uh-oh. Then add Manscaped top-of-the-line shower products to have the people thinking, all I want for Christmas is you. And then Mariah Carey voice. Uh, Oh, I don't. Nope, you don't want me singing. (laughs) Santa cares about your sack, and so should you. So look nice when you get naughty by going to manscaped.com. And use use code code BHH for free shipping and 20% off. Okay, so also, RogueCon Rogue 23 That's is coming up. Single. It's a celebration of digital content with all of its creators, all of Rogue Media's passionate fans, and any of the industry experts. So it's happening downtown Waco across multiple venues. So you'll be able to hang out downtown, hang out in our cool venues we have here. And that date is on January 20th. Through the 22nd in 2023. So, if you want to attend, you have to buy tickets. They are on sale right now. RogueCon23.com Bonus, if you come, there are live shows from some of Rogue's most favorite podcasts. Oh, would that be us? That would be us. Oh, we're included. So, you have to go to RogueCon to see us live once again. And it's a bonus live show. RogueCon. 23.com. Yes. Register now. Do it. So, Caroline, the story for today. Of course, I had to pivot, right? Oh, you of course, did? I, I studied a story oh. and I was like, oh, I'm going to do the story. I'm going to do the story. And then you, I know. I and hate then it when that you happens. 
stumble upon something. Stumble upon another one, catch and your you eye, and you're like, it. this is so much better. That other story was trash. <laughs> April has spilled her drink, I think, three times. <laughs> I think that's the third time we might get fired. Oh, my goodness. Oh, does anybody want a Parker update? <laughs> How is Parker doing? <laughs> He's good. Thanks. Thanks for asking. No more pancreatitis? No, he's no more gastric bypass or pancreatitis. He is fully back to normal. I feel like he's just finished his antibiotics today. Okay, so I happened upon a story, right? And you know sometimes you get up in the morning nope. and you got to turn on a podcast or oh. watch a YouTube yes. or something. At all times. And I stumbled on a show called Unseen. It comes in on Facebook. A Facebook show? Okay. I ain't sure. It. It's called Unseen. That's, are you? Are, yeah. You're just showing your age. It's fine. Are you? Um, I can't sit. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Are you comfortable? No, I need to pop my head. This was actually a home invasion, right? And it happened here in Texas, or at least part of the story happened in Texas. And home invasion made my ears go up, right? Mm -hmm. Because what are we talking about so much right now? Um, we, Idaho murders. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, well, is a home invasion like a robbery or just, I guess it's just coming inside of your home when you're not invited? It's a home invasion and it's a massacre. We're talking about some murdering going on. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted to know how did they solve this crime? Was it an easy solve? Like, how do they know? Because yeah. right now we're still going on not knowing much about these Idaho murders, right? Yeah. So change my story. Let's go to Pampa, Texas. And I'm going to start you off with a 911 call. Sheriff's office, 911. Ma'am, uh -huh. there was a shootout in my house. Um, I don't know who's alive in my house. So I'm scared. Where are you at? Um, 7142 Highway 70. It's about 13.3 miles out from the Bowling Alley. What's your name? Robin Doan. My parents are um, Michelle oh. Conrad and Brian Conrad. I'm scared of this and I don't know what Robin to do. Robin Doan? Yes, ma'am. Brian I Conrad. My is alive. Okay, I'll stay on this with you. <gasps> I've got the ambulance and the fire department to come oh, to, okay? Thank you so much. You're coming. <laughs> Right there. You don't see any other vehicles or strange people around your home or no. anything? No, ma'am. You didn't see a car drive off of any kind? No, ma'am. You just heard the shots fired? And I heard, I saw the lights on in the kitchen, so I'm assuming they stole some stuff. Okay, okay. <gasps> Okay. Wipe your tears, swallow the lump in your throat. I don't know take what's worse, drink. that story or the smell that I'm smelling. It must be on that side because I can't I smell it. It's probably just me. Oh, yeah. Or, oh, no, Manscaped today. Is that what it is? Oh, damn it. Yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so, there's the video. The little girl's name was Robert, Robin Doan. So, this was on September 30th, 2005. At 3.50 a.m., the Conrad family were fast asleep in their rural home on a dirt road in the middle of nowhere. It's farmland, right? Robin was woken up by gunshots. That She was dreaming of gunshots. When she woke up, she realized it wasn't a dream. Oh, shit. She heard gunshots, and she heard her mom screaming bloody murder and crying. She hopped out of her bed to take a peek out of the door. So she crouched down because her door was already open. 
and she heard footsteps from the shooter <gasps> coming down the hallway. So she hopped back in her bed, covered herself up with the covers, and acted like she was sleeping. The shooter came in and <gasps> fired two shots at Robin in her bed. Robin said she froze. The shooter left the room and went to the next room, which is her 14-year-old brother's room, and fired off three more shots. Oh, shit. Robin laid there for hours. Hours. Because she was scared to move. She didn't want him to know she was alive. Oh, 100 percent. She later says that her mom hung her robe on her door. So it's dark. She's looking through the covers. She thought that robe was somebody standing there staring at her. So she was hanging ho- half on the bed, half off of the bed. I've, I, I know. when If you ever hear something at night and you like are frozen in your bed and you like, you can't even move your eyeballs. And your heart's just pumping. Yeah. Oh, she laid there for hours, scared to Wait, move, right? She? she is 10, 10 years old. Oh, my gosh. She knew um, her exact address and how far exactly she was from the highway. What kind of 911 call was that? The best one. Yeah, yeah. So she heard him rummaging through the house, um, opening up cabinet oh doors gosh. and, you know, just kind of going around. Hours later, the sun came up. She was so tense and so working on being so still, she fell asleep. Like, it exhausted (gasps) her. She fell asleep, and when she woke up, the sun was up, and she saw that that robe was Was a a robe robe. and not a person. So she hopped out of the bed, grabbed the cordless phone, and she said, I left my room, got the phone, and went out the front door and sat on the porch. She did not go into another room. She was... I'm glad she didn't. Like, she was too scared to see what might happen. That's when she called 911, right? So that the cops come, and the first cop on the scene was Officer Chad Brooks, and she runs into his arms, and he's on one of the documentaries, and he's, like, trying to hold back tears, talking about, like, how do I take care of this little girl, right? The other officers went into the house to try to secure to make sure there was no threat. Her and Chad Brooks sat in the the car until it was secured. The officer said, "Um, can you just pay attention to Robin? You take care of Robin. We'll process the crime scene, right? So Officer Chad Brooks says, what can I do for you? Like, how do you need me to do anything? And she says, Caroline, this is going to make you, your heart bleed. I want to feed my animals. <laughs> I know. They lived on a farm, and one of her chores was to feed the oh, animals every no. morning. So they did that, and she f- kept waiting for her mom to come out. She kept waiting for her stepdad to come out, and nobody ever came out. So, at the crime scene, they discovered that the shooter kicked in one of the doors and then immediately unleashed on the whole house. Brian Conrad's stepdad was shot three times. Mom Michelle Conrad was shot six times, and she was also five to six months pregnant. (gasps) Oh, with his baby. With, yeah, with Brian, with stepdaddy's baby. Did you say with whose baby? Well, I was just saying with I like it because your mind's already going. I know. That's what it should be doing. And then he came to Robin's room, shot in her room twice, missed her. The bullet grazed her leg and shot like one of the shelves in her room. And then her brother, Zach, he went in his room. And for some reason, this time he turned on the lights. (gasps) Shot him three times, and oh. then you wonder he if shot the family dog Molly twice. Oh no! See, no, y'all, I did no. that on person on purpose. Nope. Do you see her reaction for the dog and not the humans? Listen, <laughs> dogs are different. No, they're not <laughs> because they literally have no choice they've done nothing at all wrong 
they Neither didn't... has little boy well, brother. Well, I mean, I know, but the dogs really never do any. I mean, they... <laughs> Listen, I, I have a multiple friends like and this, stuck. and they have the same reaction. I well, so are the kids, but I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, I, it's usually people who trust dogs more than humans that have this reaction. So that's the problem: is you, tr your oh. dogs have never let you down. Humans constantly let you down. Oh yeah. So you have a big love for your very one hundred true because loyal. Whenever I dogs. come home, they always love to see me. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Go ahead. What are you going to say? No, I I heard the story of uh, yesterday about this little kid who shot his mom in the eye. Like, and he, like, had previously, like, swung his dog around by the tail mm -hmm. and, like, put lighter fluid inside of a balloon and lit it on fire and then, like, lit the house on, I mean, like, he, like, burned up some of the carpet and some furniture and he's like the making of a serial killer but i'll tell you about that next week <laughs> so, i just anyway kind of goes with the story so yeah making of a serial killer but uh, whenever you do this to the dog whenever you should do something to an animal i think that's just very telling more As so than a human Oh, like precursors is what you're saying. Yeah, and even this killer who just killed the dog, like a dog is a threat. So to me, you can, the dog wasn't oh, killed well, last. I just named it last because I knew your reaction. Well, was but he was killed it actually the dog? A threatening dog? Uh, no, uh, no, it's like a. It's sheep probably dog. a poodle. They do bark though. No, it's like one of those big white, like sheep looking dogs. But he killed dad first because that's dog dad's biggest threat. Then you go to the next adult. Then you just go down the line. So a dog can be a threat to the an intruder. The dog will usually just hide. My dog will kill you. Well, I need your dog. <laughs> I mean, Jax probably would attack. So um, Parker would actually probably attack. When <sighs> the cops were in the house, they found bullet casings for an AK-47 rifle. Oh, gosh. So they know what type of gun yeah. he used. This was a m like a massacre. Home invasion. Home invasion, turned to massacre, and by this is just grace of God that Robin was not killed because she had two bullets coming at her. Uh, so she was later taken in and interviewed by a child like psychologist or something. She didn't see. It was dark. All she saw was a white face. The cops found shoe prints in the dirt outside. If you um, go look at the video and we'll post pictures, it's farmland, so there's not a ton of grass. There's a lot of dirt. So they found footprints and they find tire tracks in the driveway that don't match the family car. Mm -hmm. But then that's it. Like nothing was stolen. The house was pristine. Was there a break in? She, it, nothing oh. was stolen. He kicked down the oh, door. Yeah, he kicked down the door. That's yeah. What said, yeah, so he and he it's a home invasion. You're like, right? Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. not invited in, but nothing was stolen. So they ruled out a robbery gone wrong. The house wasn't even ransacked. Like it, she kept a nice clean house, and well, it was still house. Yeah, like still he clean. went in there to kill. To kill. Yeah. So right now, okay, so it's 2005. This is the 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 worst mass murder that Texas has seen, like home invasion mm -hmm. at this time. What are you thinking? Like, so if this goes across the news and you're watching the news, what are your automatic thoughts? Like, who? Uh, either somebody was cheating on somebody or it's a disgruntled family member or something okay. about money. I thought, okay, who's she pregnant by? Exactly. So, love affair. Yeah. I thought, where's biological dad? Because this is stepdad. So, okay. it could yeah. just be an angry parent. Yeah. yeah. And then, I'm so sorry, Robin, if you're listening to this. I did think for a minute, could the kid have done it? Because the kid, Robin, the living kid. Oh, the one who that oh, called nine one one and had like the perfect nine one one call and the perfect address. Oh my and gosh! So, but only because we've been doing all these kid, kid parasite type things, right? <laughs> so my mind went there for a second, but Robin, you're you're a badass. I never thought that, <laughs> based on her call. But you know what? I'm easily talked into things, and I believe most things. So. The cops had nothing. So let's keep this home invasion here 
and we're going to switch scenes and we're going to go to Pineville, Missouri. And we're 14 hours right before this home invasion in Pampa, okay? And Pineville, Missouri, the bodies of 70-year-old Orly McCool and his daughter, Dawn, were found dead in their home by Dawn's kid. I think Dawn's son. Mm -hmm. So Orly lives there. Daughter-in-law lives there. Son was trying to get a hold of them and couldn't, so came by. They're dead. They had just gotten home from the grocery store. Their groceries were still in the bag, dropped on the floor, and they looked at the receipts, and they knew that these this these two were killed about 2 p.m. that afternoon. So on September 29th. Okay. So Pampa happened September 30th, the morning of September 30th. This happened the afternoon, September 29th, right? Oh. God. The police okay. had no idea what happened. Both victims were shot. Nothing in the house was stolen. They ruled out robbery, but they did see that the family's missing Dodge Dakota pickup truck was gone. Okay. So whoever killed them must have stolen, stolen the truck. Yeah. Not anything anything in the house, something in a truck. So they processed the crime scene and the bullet bullet casings and they noticed the bullets belonged to a Smith and Wesson 9mm gun. Okay? Okay. Um when they get back, they one of the officers were like, I just took a police report two hours ago from a local man. He filed a report saying that he ha had a fight with his son and his son named Levi King broke into his house, broke into the gun safe, stole all of the guns and all of the ammunition. So dad is reporting his son mm -hmm. because his sons are missing, right? Mm -hmm. Well, in this one of these stolen guns matched the same gun at, from the crime from scene. the crime scene, right? So they easily put two and two together, and they say we must be looking for this guy's son, yeah. Levi King. Okay, yeah. so it's kind of falling together in Missouri right now, yeah. pretty quick. They work quickly. They put out a nationwide search, uh, not a bolo, but more than a, like a warrant out for Levi King. Mm -hmm. Um, and it turns out he has a record for arson and burglary. Oh. Okay? okay. So he's not really clean. Two hours after they put out this nationwide, no, 12 hours after they put out this nationwide search, Levi King was apprehended at the Texas-Mexico border near El Paso. Mm -hmm. So he had crossed over from El Paso to Juarez, Mexico. Okay. And he was driving a, the stolen Dodge Dakota truck and had a bag full of guns in his truck. Oh, hell. Okay. So, like, police are like, we got him. Let's get him. Let's bring him back, right? Yeah. Within 15 minutes of him being in jail, arrested and in jail, he confesses to the murders of the McCools, right? And... There's nothing else to do but, like, get a trial going, right? So this yeah. is, like, easy, clean, boom. So it's been about two weeks. And over here in Pampa, right? Yeah. They have no idea what happened to the Conrad family. Yeah. They're, like, there's tips coming in. They are following all the leads, following the tent, like, they have nothing, and they're thinking, is this going to be an unsolved case, right? But two weeks later, Levi calls up one of the investigators that he befriended, you know, since he's been in jail, and he's yeah. like, hey, I just wanted to let you know that there are four more. Uh, excuse me? And the investigator was like, wait, what four do you mean four what? more? And he said, well, when I killed the McCool's, I was on my way to Mexico. and From Missouri. From Missouri. Yeah. Where do you got to go through well, to get to Mexico? Well, according to my map, you have to go through Texas Panhandle. Which is where Pampa is. Which is exactly where Pampa is. So, 
he was talking about the Conrad family. He says, I stopped in a Texas town on the side of the road, found a small farmhouse. I went in and I killed the whole family, Conrad family. So Missouri police were like in shock. They hadn't even heard of the numbers because we're 500 miles away from yes. each other. Yes. Right? Is they called Texas Pampa up. Oh. And uh-uh. it turns out that there's also a stolen AK-47, which that gun matched the bullets in the Pampa house, right? Oh, yeah. So, okay, right here. Let's refer to the Idaho murders really quick. How unrelated are both of these things? They thought, Pampa thought they were dealing with a mass murderer, but it's actually a spree killer. Spree, yes. A spree killer. But never would they have put these two together. It's two different bullets, right? It is. There's no rhyme or reason. No, there's, there's no connection. No. It was totally random. And had Levi not confessed, I oh, they, really they believe would not know. right now no, would be unsolved. No idea unsolved so it makes me think of like idaho right now what are they doing they're looking for similar crimes in a radius vicinity of the idaho murders so i mean what else do you follow do, those you know well but this is 500 miles away that would have been in the radius exactly but what like, is similar this isn't similar i know but that's the thing <laughs> it's like how how you would know you wouldn't know so that's to me it just it's like oh god well it the only good thing is is that that pol- officer did have video or body cam so at least there is something something because this is out in the middle of nowhere mm-hmm. around nobody yeah and he just randomly just drove by and was like I'm going to, I guess there's people here and I'm just going to go, you know, how do you not just in an unfamiliar house? Like you just, you have no care. Like you have just give zero fucks. Like just to walk in somebody's house and start shooting. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. And we're going to talk more about like his motivation and everything. Okay. So bullets match the AK 47. <clears throat> and so now investigators are like, who in the hell is this Levi King? Who is this guy? And what made him go on a 24-hour killer spree? And guess what? They didn't have to look far because Levi pulled a Jeffrey Dahmer. Confessed. Oh. <laughs> he like was diarrhea at the mouth. He confessed to everything. I have to show you. First of all, I watched... Uh, um, a killer speaks on Hulu. It's season one, episode one, oh. and he is a good-looking Wait, killer. I, he looks familiar. I must have watched that. I mean, I never like <laughs> didn't meet him or anything. <laughs> so if you go watch this, oh, you're gonna picture a wow. monster, but he's decent-looking. He's good-looking. He's calm. Oh yeah. He's calm. Yeah. So he grew up in a small town in Missouri. His mom was in and out of the picture. She had drug problems. So his dad raised him and his six siblings. Okay. And the house that he grew up in looked on some of these documentaries, basically like Pazuzu's house. Oh, gro- oh gosh. Um, so it had no running water. It didn't have sewage. They had in- no food. Rarely had electricity, but what they did have was tons of ammo, knives, and guns. At an early age, Levi showed antisocial disorders, behaviors. Okay. Age four, he set his sister's room on fire. Oh, okay. Because she made him mad. Like, how mad can you be at four years old? But he set it on fire. Mm. At age 10... He started smoking. At age 11, he started drinking heavily. And at age 13, he was popping pills. All of this with his dad. Okay. Yeah. He, his dad. Parents. (laughs) 
I know, I know. We can't blame the mom this time. It's the daddy. So his daddy was very abusive. He would whoop their ass daily, daily. The only time he had um, father-son time with his dad is when they were drinking, doing drugs, or killing animals. Oh, gosh. Dun, dun, dun. Ugh. Now, they're not just killing it like deer to eat it for food, right? No. Not like Mm-mm. the raccoon that like no. is getting in the trash. Mm-mm. Nope. Mm-mm. I'll eat. If yeah. one of the siblings brought home a stray cat or dog. He gone. He gone. He gone. Um, and he wouldn't just like no, take he it would, to the woods and kill him. He would want to see it struggle and suffer. He I'm assuming. would kill the Strangle dog. Strangle it. In front of. No, he would shoot it because he likes his guns and his ammo. He would shoot the dog or the cat in front of Levi. Right. Levi's first memory of this is his dad purposely brought home a box of puppies. Took them outside, took his shotgun, and shot each and every one of those puppies in front of Levi. Levi, the first time, was disgusted. He's like wanting to create a monster. Like, who oh, is this dad? He's a monster created. His name was Scott King. Did he Daddy. kill people? No. But he had antisocial behaviors. wonder why he didn't end up killing people. Because he killed animals instead. He never graduated, I guess. I know. That's weird because typically you uh, you graduate. And he got his out on beating kids. So he got all his rage and all his violence out on killing animals and beating <sighs> people's ass. And he had seven people's ass to beat every day. Like, you don't have to kill if you can whoop people's ass all the time. So... Um, he remembers a cat that showed up and his dad shot that cat until it was in pieces and you couldn't see cats anymore. Couldn't see that it was a cat anymore. And so that's the only father sometime he got with his dad. That sounds like a great relationship. I mean, uh, Sweepy needs to work on his relationship with Trenton because I feel like Scott King gets the daddy of the year award. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, Mm. So he hated his dad, of course, and the hate got worse and worse and worse. And so the psychologist referred to this as displaced rage, right? And he killed these other people in lieu of his dad. So he calls that displaced patricide. Okay. People do it. It's kind of like Yeah, I would rather you kill your dad. I know. They actually asked him why he didn't kill his dad. And what did he say? Because he's my dad. No, he said, um, I thought about it, but I thought about my siblings who okay. live there you as no well. And no cares. And I didn't want them to see their dad get killed by their brother. <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> I know. I, I want to hear you talk. By the age 20, he broke into a neighbor's house and he set... That neighbor's house on fire. So you just didn't break in and steal shit. You broke in and you set the house on fire. He got arrested and sentenced to 14 years in prison. Oh, but did he serve like a month and then get out? 17 months. Oh, good. 14 years (laughs) to 17 months? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And this wasn't in California. This was in (laughs) Missouri. So... Let's count the red flags. Killing animals. Set fires. Setting fires. And Having alcohol, a crazy drug dad, abuse. Alcohol, drinking when you're five. Abuse of family. All, all of it. All the red flags. He was only in prison for 17 months, and he was released to a halfway house, Caroline. A halfway house in St. Louis, Missouri, where he had to get a job, and he had to come in at a certain time. You know the date when he was released? September 2005. When were the murders? Um, 2005. I don't know. September 2005. 29th and 30th. Right? Yes. Yes. I did listen. So. Wow. He was not wasting any time. No. He stayed at the halfway house for a little bit. And in his interview on The Killer Speaks, he says that he got fed up with the living conditions in this halfway house. 
Okay. Where else are you going to live? Well, motherfucker, you lived in a house with no water and no sewage. Now and then you were in jail. Now he bougie. How, how you bougie now? <laughs> so I, he I, left. I, th- so I do think that sometimes they just, they get used to jail. Honestly. Yeah, maybe so. Because it's like, you have your, you have your people you know. You have... um the stuff that you it's do, it's just mentality. your routine. And if you get into your routine, you don't know anything. It, that's just your routine. Mm-hmm. That's why Kemper likes Joe. But, and it's their only stability. Really. Yeah. Yeah. So he left, he picked up his paycheck and he hitched hike and he went to his family home in Pineville, wherever it was. His mom was there. Oh, she wasn't excited to see him. Oh, dad was there. Oh, didn't acknowledge him. Oh, and actually talked bad to him and kicked him out. This, what? Yeah. I mean, you burned the neighbor's house down. <laughs> You're well, an embarrassment. You and they shot never all the puppies. <laughs> so. How are you judging, Daddy King? Yeah. Do not judge. <laughs> so this is what, this was his trigger. This was his stressor added to everything else. <sighs> He felt rejected. He was pissed. He was enraged. And he says, he felt, he says, I didn't expect a warm welcome, but he made me feel like I wasn't good enough to be in your shitty family gross home. Right. So he left, but he stewed all night. Yeah. All I, night. I just, I'm sure. I am shocked he didn't kill. Wait, how were his siblings still there? Yeah, that's. He says that's why he still had okay, siblings there. Okay, okay. I think he's 23 at this time. I don't know if I've said an age. So when Dad went to work, he snuck in the next morning and he vandalized the house. Like it's already tore up. He tore it up more. He stole his dad's AK-47, a hunting rifle, and a nine millimeter handgun, all the ammunition, and he took off. Hmm. walking down the road. Well, at least that probably pissed the dad off. So I just want the dad to be mad. Oh, the he didn't... Because that was like his prized possession, obviously, was his guns. And so the police and the investigators were like, he didn't call in the police report because he was concerned that his son was going to hurt somebody. He wanted his guns back. Oh, yeah, he did. And his ammo. Yeah. Yep. There was no food in the house, but his guns... Don't, yeah. I'll show you a picture. We're going to post this picture. Um, I mean, it's obviously not a nice place, but you see how he has well, them that's like how he has his propped power. up on a wall. Those are like knives sticking out and guns and all a bunch of the ammo right there. So oh it was his prized possessions. Yeah. So he walks a couple miles down the road and he's just walking down the street and he sees a man and a woman leaving the house. This is the McCool house. He, when he sees them leave, that's when they're going to the grocery store, he breaks into the house, and he obviously waited on them to come back. He says he knew he wanted to kill. He wasn't sure if he was going to kill. So let's see what he says. And, okay. Serial killer calendar. Soon, Orly and Dawn McCool return home in their pickup. I heard them pulling up into the driveway, so I went to the uh, left of the front door and uh, um, waited. Uh, I already had it in mind what I was going to do. King watches as first Dawn, then Orly, enter their house. Don McCool uh, came in first, went down into the living room. Orly McCool. Whenever I heard him uh, coming in the front door, I stepped out of his office, started walking towards him, at which point he caught sight of me. But before he ever even had time to respond, I leveled off the uh, firearm and opened fire. I shot him in the uh, left temple, and uh, he dropped. Dawn stops at the bottom of the stairs, frozen. My view of her body was obstructed by a uh, pillar and cross beams. Um, All I could really see was her left leg. The first shot that I did into her hip 
that caused her to fall over, at which point I opened fire um, and continued to fire upon her until uh, I saw no more signs of life. King steals the keys to the McCool's pickup truck. I sat in the pickup for uh, you know, two or three minutes just sitting there in the driveway, uh, not doing a thing. And then, he claims, the world shifted. Everything stopped. I don't know how to describe the exact feeling, but it was uh, as close to, as I've ever known to peace. I'll tell you what the doctor oh. says about that after this break. And now a word from our sponsors. Nine one one, what's your emergency? Do you hear that? It's coming from the house. It's coming from inside the house. Uh, do you mean? Could it be? The, the Bolter House. New from Rogue Media, two haunted hotties talking about haunted places. Every episode, we dive deep into the darkest places and give you a bit of history. We're getting spooky in all the right places. You gobbled your last ghoul. Follow along for the craziest and spookiest stories with Debbie's Dark Tourism. The Stanley Hotel, Winchester House, The Alamo, Hotel Monte Vista, and more spooky places. Find us at the underscore Poltergals, P-O-L-T-E-R-G-A-L-S. Look over your shoulder. It's us, the Poltergals. Wherever you consume the podcast, you can find us there. Welcome to One Star Rewind, a new podcast about those dreaded one-star reviews that every business owner hates to receive, but yet every customer loves to read. During this podcast, we will peel back that one-star review to better understand how it happened, when it happened, and what the business owner is doing after receiving that one-star review. This podcast will be about love, hate, and laughter. On One Star Rewind, we will meet with real business owners who will tell their stories and how they do rely on reviews for their business. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or download us at roguemedianetwork.com. Please subscribe, but only rate and review for not a one-star review. Join us each time for a new review and a new story. And I'm Mike. And we have a fantastic new podcast to tell you about. Bros, foes, and heroes. It's the two of us looking into the world of comics, breaking down some characters that you may have never heard of, and some that are just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so Zach comes up with a character each time, and uh, I go into it just completely blind. I don't know who this person is or what their abilities are or anything, and, and basically I guess we kind of go over their origin story and just some of the ridiculous stuff that maybe especially golden age stuff oh golden yeah. age stuff is always the best and we will make sure to highlight all of the shenanigans and just absolute weirdness yeah. of everything yeah, that's right so subscribe today and uh, follow us on instagram at bros bros heroes and if you don't i know where you would not really but please subscribe <laughs> 
Bros and Bros and Heroes. Gonna tell you about Bros and Bros and Heroes. Gonna tell you about. Okay, so the... Besides the fact that April has a pretty big crush on this murderer. Y'all, he's got one green eye, oh. one blue eye. Oh, I didn't notice That's that why they I was were... pointing at his I know, eyes. I just thought they... I I noticed that they were very pretty, but I didn't notice so one was... So pretty. And he has r- voluptuous... And he has good lips. Good lips. He's got a nice beard. He's bald. There's something about a bald guy for me. I don't like the long... I like a... Sh- Cut beard but and maybe white teeth. Yeah, that's the only. But I mean, besides he's a murderer. If, and the yeah, teeth. if he wasn't a murderer and he had white teeth. <laughs> swipe right. Yeah. Swipe right. Yeah, swipe right. So um, the psychologist during this, that was a excerpt from The Killer Speaks, describes this as euphoria. So there's three stages of displaced patricide. There's the incubation period. So that's that rage that he held in when his dad pissed him off and kicked him off, right? Mm -hmm. Kicked him out. Mm -hmm. That usually lasts a couple hours to a day. It's the buildup, right? Then there's the violent act, which is his killing of the McCools. And then there's the relief stage. That's where they have this euphoria. And you compare it to like drug addicts first high. Like if the first time with heroin or what crack or whatever, that first high they get is like the best high. He says later on that everything was washed away. All the anger and all the fear that he felt his whole life was gone. And he had never felt so good or so happy. Wow. He took off in their truck. He had no plan. He was just enjoying his feeling of accomplishment and his peace. I remember now. And he's driving, 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 driving. And then he gets pissed because it goes away. It goes away. Yes. 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 So I did watch this. I wore off about six-ish hours later. Wow. That's when he's so in Texas. In, oh, you know, once again, the brain. Mm-hmm. And he started having that rage, that anger, that peace went away. And, and he I wanted, wanted to, to feel that way again, which is why drug, a- drug addicts will Gotta go next a hit. second time, get that next hit. And you'll do whatever it takes. Now. Pawn he- your wife's jewelry, <laughs> steal her credit card, get some yep. cash advances. Mm-hmm. You know. All the things. Sell your kids shit. Mm-hmm. Fake text messages like a friend needs to borrow money. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. So. The only he thinks the only way he can get this feeling again is to kill again. So now he's in the panhandle and he pulls onto a back road purposely. Right? And he randomly spots this nice, quiet farmhouse. This is the Conrad home. Ugh. And this is about fourteen hours later from when he actually killed the McCools. This was a perfect opportunity. He said he passed up the home and then turned did a u-turn and turned around so it was random but planned because he purposely got on back roads and side roads yeah to find it secluded farm home right um he shot them all he went to the living room and looked at their family pictures and in the home and realized that that family had a way better one day in their life was way better than his whole life. Yeah. But he wasn't jealous. He just noticed that like by this time he don't, he can't feel shit. Right. Yeah. Oh, he explored yeah. the house. He didn't trash the house, but he said, as he was in the bathroom, he looked in the mirror and he said, I felt no reaction. I had no feeling, no fulfillment. He just felt empty. So he did not get that high that he got the first time. Wow. Why did it only happen one time? Well, the psychologist, Louis Schlesinger, oh. said that he did it too quick. Oh. If he would have waited. He didn't have enough of a cooling off period. I, yes. If he would have waited another day, then that anticipation and that incubation builds up again. 
Yeah. And then he would have had the violent act and it would have had that relief. So that's um, why spree killers often go on a spree like that because that first one feels great. Mm -hmm. So they keep on trying to get it and they don't always get it. So he felt empty. And so he was like, let me get back in the truck. He stopped. He stopped somewhere and he got gas and he got a map and he was like, let me just go to Mexico, get away with anything in Mexico. They can't extradite me in Mexico. So he goes to Juarez. And that's how he ends up in El Paso, right? He makes it across the border. Caroline Wolf. With guns? Yes, because they don't, or back then, they don't ask you shit when you're going there. Oh, they, We ask you stuff when you're coming back. So we don't want you bringing stuff here, but you can take, or... At this time, he took whatever he wanted. Yeah. There. I haven't been in so long. I can't remember how it was. So he crossed the border into Juarez, right? But he's a dumbass. Oh, what? <laughs> this is something I would do. So he's driving and he decides to get off the main road that he's on. So he exit off like the interstate, I guess, and turns. And when he tries to get back on, he turns one way instead of the other way. And so he gets back on the interstate. But instead of wrong. going south, motherfucker's coming back up north to Tejas. Oh, hell. So then he gets his ass back up at the border with the border control. And he's going through. There's no way for him to turn around. So he's a, like, y'all take a drink because he's a dumbass. He got lost. And he went north instead of south, so he ended up coming back into Texas. So then he would have to get checked by the patrol so and all the stuff. So we asked what you got, and he was like, oh, I got an AK-47 and a millimeter. And by this time, he knew like it was over. So he told them, they said, pull over, get out. And then that manhunt that we were, lo- we were looking for him, that red flag went off, and so he was arrested. What? So easy. So he, but he... Basically got away with it. He got away. But he he brought himself back. <laughs> I would do that. Wonder where he would have <laughs> gone. I don't, Did he say he was just going to go he randomly? He said he had no plan. And he just thought, might as well go to Mexico. I think he would have, I think he would have got killed. He probably would have. the wrong person. He would have got I drunk, mean, got high, got yeah. killed. He probably would have maybe survived for a little bit, at least gotten some kind of gang. I don't know that they would even let him in a gang. I don't think I think he would have ran out of money and tried to kill kill again. I guess you can't just like join into a gang. No, you can't be a white boy in Mexico and say, Can I join your gang? I mean <laughs> Or maybe. you can. I don't know. If you have one green eye and one blue eye, maybe that's a good sign. He's arrested and he just complies and he starts confessing. Right? He, that's how we know, like, a little bit of more detail of everything that happened. Mm -hmm. So he pleads guilty to the murders in Missouri for Orly and Don McCool. And he gets two life sentences. And so now Texas is like, bring them on down. It's our turn. We need to try them for the Conrad murders, right? Mm -hmm. And this is four years later. By the time the trial comes. So Robin yep. is now 14 and she's old enough to testify. And so they put her on the stand. Oh my God. And um, while she was on the stand, she told the story of what happened. And she looked him and she says on the documentary that he could burn a hole through you because he looked straight through you. And if you just, there's no emotion behind his words Mm -mm. there's no anything so she told him that she did forgive him though so anyways he was sentenced to life that we tried for the death penalty right because if there's a not in the state of texas all you needed to kill was one but he killed one two three including the baby and four yeah and attempted and the dog he got life and the dog he got life in prison. So, and I, th- I, th- I think I read it's because he pled guilty. Had he pled not guilty and tried to deny any of it and fight it, they would have been able to put him 
um, give them the death penalty. So Mm -hmm. sometimes they'll plead and confess to stay alive. And so he wanted Mm. to stay alive. So when asked if he felt guilty about any of it, this is what he said. Do you feel remorse? Do you feel guilt? No. I can honestly say that even during trial, I really didn't care about uh, anybody else that I hurt, um, or of course, certainly before trial, um, and I still don't. If there is, he did not care about before, during, or after any of the lives that he affected with these deaths, and he just says it so nonchalantly, with no emotion, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, Robin, I don't want to end really on him. I want to end on Robin Mm -hmm. because she's the survivor, right? She went on to be successful. So after the trial, she stayed in Pampa with family. She went to high school. She was a cheerleader. She played sports. She had tons of friends. She wore number 12 as her number in sports because that was her brother's baseball number. And every day she will wear a number 12 necklace for her brother. Um, She remained friends with Officer Brooks, the first (gasps) officer on the scene. Um, He attended her Sweet 16 party and her graduation. And people, she says that people waited for her to break, but she just did it. She wasn't going to give them that. When she graduated high school, the Pampa Police Department raised $10,000 for her Uh. to go to junior college because she wanted to be a pediatric nurse. So last I saw, that's what she was doing in life is becoming a pediatric nurse because she said she knew that she had a, um, she lived for a reason. So she has a purpose. purpose. I couldn't find the word. So, um, where is he, what prison is he in, like Texas Um, or what? No, she, they took his ass back to Missouri and she says at the end, she was like, Texas is my state. Get your ass out of Texas. Hell yeah. Go to Missouri. So Texas, baby. Any hope to be found in this story, it lies in Robin Doan. I said, I forgive you. Levi King, I forgive you. I told him that to his face. In court, that was me taking a thousand steps forward and never taking any back. Robin Doan refuses to be defined by this tragedy. I know that my family wouldn't want me to mope around and have my head down all the time and pout and cry and throw pity parties for myself when I can be living life to the fullest and have a smile on my face every day and just get through and push through and know that there's always a brighter tomorrow. Uh, that's Robin Doan. You're a badass, I Robin. He, she, oh, did She's he ever have, uh, like, a, I guess he never probably had, like, a girlfriend. He, nothing, because he ha- has no emotions, so he can't feel, so it doesn't matter. I... It, it didn't yeah, I'm go sure it didn't say much. anything about that. Yeah. yeah. It didn't go that much into detail about his love life or yeah. sex life yeah, or yeah, anything. Yeah. Um, he just had a life of like anger and rage. And so he found a way to get that out. Oh my gosh. Ooh. It's well, just crazy how many random murders are so random so like this out there. Yes. And that's why they're unsolved. Mm. I know. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate that he's so good looking. He's a waste. Because I was like, Levi he's King. Not, like, so good looking. Well, it's just, I know. He just has pretty eyes. He just had so much potential. If he, well, you know what? So did Dirty Chad. He is six foot. He was lean. He could have been a quarterback. He could have played in a band. He could have played drums. Should have been there, done that. Can't you hear Levi King? Nope. Nominated for prom king. Like, (laughs) it just was like if his daddy wasn't so shitty, would he be a great person? Nope. You're not. Bye. No. Mm -hmm. Neither is Dirty Chad. Okay, y'all. Goodness, goodness, goodness. That was a mouthful. I hope you enjoyed it. Send this episode to 14 of your friends. Yes. Send it to 14. Go rate. Go review. Go subscribe. And send us your 
um, shirt ideas for Dirty Chad shirts. For Dirty Chad. Also go to manscaped.com. Enter code BHH. You get 20% off and free shipping. Don't forget to stay aware. Stay alive. And always be DTF. Bye, y'all. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.